Hi everybody and welcome to this tutorial on virtual private clouds or VPCs. So in this exercise what we're going to do is we'll create a non-default VPC with a single subnet. And just as a reminder subnets enable us to group instances based on our security and operational needs. So there's two different types of subnets. There's a public subnet which is accessible by the internet or a private subnet which is accessible only within that VPC. So after doing that, we'll create a security group for our instance that allows traffic only through specific ports. We'll launch uh, an Amazon S. We'll launch an EC2 instance into our subnet and associate an elastic IP address with that instance, which will allow our instance to access the internet. So first and foremost, we're going to go ahead and create our VPC. So let's navigate to our VPC section. And from our VPC dashboard, we're going to launch the VPC wizard. And here we have several options in order to launch VPCs. We can launch it with a single subnet. We can have VPCs with public and private subnets. We can have VPCs with public and private subnets and hardware VPN access, or with private subnet only and hardware VPN access. And the hardware VPN basically allows us to connect our on-prem network onto the VPC hosted by AWS. So we'll stick with the single subnet. Let's give this VPC a name. And up here it mentions an IPv4 CIDR or CIDR block. Now this is a bit outside of the scope of the cloud practitioner's exam. We'll need to know about this in the solutions architect course and exam. So this is basically gives us a number of IP addresses that we're able to use in binary formats. In a total there's 65,531 IP addresses available. So if you want to limit the number of IP addresses that are allocated to this subnet, we can do that through the sitter block. The availability zone gives us a choice of where we want to create this instance in based on the region, which I'm currently in London. We'll just leave it as no preference. We can also additionally give this subnet a name if we will have multiple subnets. It's always good to differentiate between private and public ones. So with the service endpoint, so in the service endpoint section, we can select a subnet in which to create a VPC endpoint to Amazon S3 in the same region. So here we can either allow DynamoDB or S3. We can limit the amount of access that these inst that these services will have to this VPC or customized access. And in the custom one, we'll just have to use either this JSON editor or we can use the policy creation tool. So with this enable DNS host names, when set to yes, it ensures that instances that are launched into our VPC receive a DNS host name. And the hardware tenancy option enables us to select whether instances launched into the VPC are run on a shared or dedicated hardware. Just keep in mind that if you select dedicated tenancy, it incurs additional costs. We'll go ahead and click on create VPC. So if we go into our VPCs, we see there are two VPCs, the one that we just created and the default one that's created when we launched our first EC2 instance. So now that we have our VPC created, let's go ahead and create a security group. And if you remember, a security group basically acts as a firewall, a virtual firewall to control the traffic for its associated instances. So for a security group, we need to add inbound rules to control incoming traffic to the instance and outbound rules to control the outgoing traffic from the instance. Now VPC does come with a default security group. Any instance not associated with another security group during launch is automatically associated with the default security group of the VPC. So let's go ahead and navigate to our security group section in security. Well, we're going to create a security group. And here we're going to select the ID of the VPC that we just created and create the security group. So here you can see the security group that we just created. So once we select it on the bottom, we can see a description. And here is where we can specify the inbound rules and the outbound rules. So in the inbound rules, let's go ahead and click on edit. We're going to add a rule. And here are all of the rules that we can add. So let's go ahead and allow HTTP traffic. And the source is basically the 0.0, .0 means from anywhere. And let's also add in an HTTPS. And if you guys can see it automatically detects the default ports for both HTTP and HTTPS. 
Now that we have our VPC created, we have a security group associated with it, let's associate or let's add instances to this VPC. So if we go back to our dashboard before we collect it, before we selected launch our VPC wizard, so let's go ahead and select launch EC2 instances. We'll just select the default instance that we created in the previous lesson. So here is where we can select the VPC that we want this to be associated with. If you guys remember the last one that we created was associated with the default VPC because we only had one. Now that we have the other VPC created, we can associate this instant with this VPC. And here also, if we had multiple subnets, they would show here, but since we only have one, only one is showing up. And here is where we can associate security groups with this instance. So here we can either create a new security group or select an existing security group. We want to select an existing one because if you recall, we just created this one previously. So we'll associate this instance with this security group. And here it's, it defines what the security group allows. It allows both HTTP and HTTPS traffic inbound and outbound. So once we have that instance launched, we go back to our VPC dashboard and attach an elastic IP to that instance. And an elastic IP address is basically a static IPv4 address designed for dynamic cloud computing. So an, ad, so an elastic IP address is associated with our AWS account. And with it, we can mask the failure of an instance or software by rapidly remapping the address to another instance in our account. And just keep in mind that an elastic IP address is a public IPv4 address which is reachable from the internet. So if we were to associate an elastic IP address with the instance that we just created, it will allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic from the internet to reach this instance. Basically now the instance is accessible from the internet with the elastic IP address being associated with it. So those are the steps that we would need to do in order to create a custom VPC. But just a few things to keep in mind. In security, we have both a network access control list or NACL and security groups. Now a network access control list are applicable at the subnet level. So any instance in the subnet with an associated NACL will follow the rules of the NACL. The security groups, as we saw, have to be associated with a specific instance. By default, our default VPC will have a default NACL which will allow all traffic both inbound and outbound. So if you want to restrict access at the subnet level, it's always good practice to create a custom network access control list. Also keep in mind that network access control lists are stateless unlike security groups which are stateful. So in a security group, let's say if you add an inbound rule for port 80, it's automatically allowed out, meaning outbound rule for that particular port need not be explicitly added. But for the network access control list, you need to specifically provide an explicit inbound and outbound rule. Lastly, in security groups, we cannot deny traffic from a particular instance. By default, everything is denied. We can set rules only to allow. Whereas in a network access control list, we can set rules both to allow and to deny. In the peering connections is where we can do VPC peering. If we want to connect two AWS VPCs together, we can accomplish that through peering. The NAT gateways allow two subnets. Let's say if you have a private and public subnet, they will access the internet through a NAT gateway or network address translation gateway. And the endpoints and endpoint services allow applications to connect to instances in the VPC.